Well, welcome to this episode of the BGA 5 in 5. Today I have the pleasure of chatting with the artist Julie Dapper, who's here with me today. Uh, Julie is um, uh, in the show in Nourish. Uh, her two pieces are in the gallery. Definitely go check them out. Mixed media collage, very beautiful, very spiritual and soulful like she is. Thank you so much for doing this. And um, the first question is, what is your favorite piece in the show, Nourish, Feast for the Eyes, Food for the Soul, aside from yours, of course? Thank you. Uh, yeah, the piece that I that struck me most in the show is uh, David Morris's photograph. It's called mm -hmm. A Welcome Sight. And I was kind of stunned by that. I looked at it first and it, uh, I thought it was a painting. I thought, oh, wow, what a skilled artist. Uh, you know, to create such a, a beautiful painting. And then I saw it was a photograph. And that was something. Um, it looks very, you know, painterly. And uh, the shadows, the um, the reflection, I guess he um, took it towards the end of the day. So it was kind of uh, late afternoon light. And that's captured really beautifully. Um, the composition itself is great. Um, when you first look at it, you see the bright red apple in the uh, upper left corner, and immediately your eye is uh, taken around um, by the banana <laughs> on the right side. Uh, uh, so beautifully, the way it, it just your eye just so easily moves around the painting. Uh, keeping with the theme of, of nourish, the other thing we were interested in learning is what kind of food is your favorite food to eat? <laughs> what came to my mind um, is a special dish, uh, and it's nourishing because it's a dish that I, I share a lot with others on special occasions. Uh, I'm not a big cook, but um, this is one thing that, <laughs> that I like to make uh, like for friends and family. It's called Kaiserschmarren, which means emperor's foam in German. And um, the emperor uh, was Franz Joseph, the emperor that uh, first discovered this dish. It was invented um, uh, in his palace or wherever. And it's uh, a pa like a pancake. I mean, the batter is pretty much like a pancake, but it has a lot of stiffly beaten egg whites in it. So it becomes very fluffy. And you would fill a whole, you know, large pan with it um, several times, you know, to make a, a lot for guests. But, um, and once it starts to form the pancake, you tear it with two forks. So you shred it. Um, then you place it in a, you know, a large plate and um, sprinkle it over with confectionery sugar. The, the batter itself is, <laughs> the batter itself is not uh, very sweet. It is a little sweet. But uh, a lot of the sweetness comes from the confectioner's sugar. And then you, it's always served with fruit compost. So whatever fruit is available, you use. Um, sometimes now I you know, even use, use frozen if I need to. It still comes out fine. Um, but like peaches, plums, uh, apricots, apples, any, any kind of fruit. So you just, <laughs> you just boil the fruit and um, boil it down. Um, Add a little sugar if it needed, otherwise not. And then, um, you know, you know, dish out like a, a nice helping of the pancake and you put the compost over it or nearby it. And it's just very, very delicious and very, very comforting. Mm -hmm. um, the true comfort food and very nourishing as well. But you take, you know, taste of it, you taste, but the pancake's pretty buttery and light and fluffy. And then you have the tartness of the fruit and then the sweetness of the confectionery sugar. And, um, you know, everybody loves it. Maybe, do you have a recipe you could share with oh, us? Oh, I do. Sure. Oh, wonderful. I have, an, I have a recipe right from an Austrian cookbook. I mean, it's an English, English Austrian cookbook. Um, which of course I can share. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> mm. That would be great. We can have a feast. Um, <laughs> the next question in the five questions is: What artist, living or dead, famous or not, would you invite to dinner, and what would you talk about? <laughs> That's a great question. It really is. Um, and I would have to say Frida Kahlo. 
first comes to my mind. Um, one, she's, there wouldn't be any small talk with Frida. <laughs> I don't believe, I believe, a t you know, a discussion with her over dinner would be very illuminating. Um, she had such a poetic mind and spoke, um, you know, so succinctly and so beautifully. So um, I kind of imagine it, what that would be like. Um, and I, I think I would have a very beautiful centerpiece of flowers um, because we know how much Frida loves flowers. And I could see her commenting on it and she'd say something, this is actually a quote from Frida, but she would say, I um, paint flowers so they will not die, mm -hmm. which is beautiful. And mm -hmm. um, then I imagine myself offering Frida a glass of wine and she would say, uh, oh, Ju uh, Julie, <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, try to drown my sorrows with liquor but they learn to swim. <laughs> <laughs> Darn those and, um, Yeah. And uh, I think maybe we would discuss um, artistic inspiration. And Frida, um, uh, uh, I imagine, might say, uh, I am my own muse. <laughs> mm -hmm. I am my own muse. And um, I paint myself. And uh, I want to better myself, but I am my own muse, my own inspiration, which is a remarkable thing. She actually said something like that. <laughs> Just imagining her, I can imagine her sitting in front of me and what an amazing experience and joy and delight that would be. So I think it would be Frida. The next question is, what is um, one book and a piece of music that you find very nourishing. Okay, okay. Um, I'm a bibliophile, um, mm -hmm. book addict. <laughs> Confess, I'm confessing it here. Um, so it's difficult, but the one I um, would have to go to is um, Shakespeare, like the complete works of William Shakespeare. Um, I've loved Shakespeare from when I was a child. I think I heard it and loved it. and uh, I always think when I open like the complete works of Shakespeare, it's just like um, opening a treasure, bottomless treasure chest. <laughs> mm -hmm. And there's so many beautiful jewels and uh, amazing things. Just his, um, the variety of characters and the, um, his, uh, you know, the way he, expressed human emotion, human conflict, all that. It's just not never been surpassed. I think he's the greatest writer of all time. Um, I'm an actress, so uh, Shakespeare, again, means a lot to me, and I've been very lucky to play you know, some of his characters. So mm -hmm. um, when I speak Shakespeare, like as an actress, or even just reading it aloud, I feel like I have jewels in my mouth. <laughs> and, you know, when I... I uh, just uh, read it to myself too. It just it just um, makes my heart sing. What I would say. Uh, there are uh, you know lots of characters that I love. I think I, it's hard. I love. Uh, I think Vic Bath is probably my favorite uh, Shakespeare play, but I also love others: Romeo and Juliet, um, Hamlet, Othello. Uh, mean so mean a lot to my life, and now I'm. Um, Sort of introducing my niece, uh, who's uh, eight years old now, Emma, um, to Shakespeare. She loves it. And also, I, I, I'm a nanny, um, and I take care of little children, and they love it. Wow. Um, this little boy that I've worked with recently, he was one and a half, and he did a Shakespeare play with me. <laughs> and it was so incredible. Like, he did um, the response, and everything was and he loves it, you know, he gets so happy. I read, I read it to him in a book um, when I first started working with him. So he must've been like about nine, 10 months. And he lit up like a Christmas tree when I started reading the language to him. It just completely sparked. And since then he's loved Shakespeare and he's two now, but you know, since he was like nine months, he's loved Shakespeare and he still does to this day. So. 
That's me. wonderful. How wonderful to be able to see it through his eyes in a way, to see it, it lights him up, you know. Um, exactly. Yeah. So that would be my, my favorite book. As far as um, a piece of music, um, I've always loved um, Cat Stevens, uh, who's now Yusuf. So Yusuf Cat Stevens and his songs completely nourish me on a, you know, on a soul level. Um, they, I love them all, and you know, I feel like uh, I'm just completely in tune with his spirit. Um, but if I had to pick one um, that I'd like to hear, like over and over, like a desert island disc, I think it would be um, a more recent song for him. Um, it's called "Heaven Where True Love Goes," and he wrote that um, uh, for his first album after he hadn't been singing for 28 years he devoted himself to his religion and his family but thank god he came back uh, 15 years ago and when i first heard this song i just started like weeping um and whenever i hear it now you know i feel the tears coming and i feel like by him transported to heaven i really do um and it's such a powerful beautiful message in the song it says i go where true love goes and follow true love follow true love so um and it, the way he sings it his voice there's so much passion and tenderness and um uh you know just wisdom and spirit in his singing that it just takes me to heaven so you can't get better than that <laughs> so the last question um and and you picked the person I would have picked too oh well, yeah what artist yeah. would you have paint your portrait <laughs> Yeah, what immediately came to my mind um, with this question is John Singer Sargent. Um, and his portraits are just so luminous and transcendent. Um, and I was reading a little bit about his style. They said he painted with a, a bravura kind of brush stroke, mm -hmm. um, which is a very lively brush stroke. And he, it's interesting that um, if you look closely at his paintings, he painted in an abstract uh, kind of way, yet when you distance yourself from it, it comes together as a very realistic, but very spiritual as well. So uh, it was very incredible. And I just, I just love the beauty, his sense of beauty um, and the luminous quality of, of things, you know, the jewels and um, the skin, everything is, is so beautiful. And, and has that spirituality behind it. So I would pick Sargent. That's wonderful. My it's, it's what an honor that would be, right? Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. yes. Yeah. I love um, the, the theme that runs throughout the answers to your questions, the you know, luminosity. We started with the photograph um, and the Shakespeare's jewels in your mouth and, and, and Sargent now, which is just, uh, I fell in love yeah. with Sargent. And I don't know. Now I have to pick someone else though, because you have Sarge. Oh no, no, no. You can do Sarge. <laughs> Maybe we could both we could both be in the painting, you know, because we did that sometime. That sounds lovely. <laughs> that sister is fun. We can get Rebecca know. too. Rebecca too. Oh, there you go. Ooh, the three graces, like the show you <laughs> That's right. Oh, thank you so much, Julie. This was this was lovely to sit and chat with you on this gray, rainy day. You certainly yeah. brought color and light into my afternoon. So thank you so thank much. Thank you as well, Aideen. Thank you so much.